Hello and welcome to my second Plexus 2D tutorial and in this tutorial I will show you how to model your geotextiles and how to model your soil models and if you watched the previous video I like to thank you for watching the previous video it really means a lot to me so now let's get started so to check on your materials you click on this show materials button over here and to model your geotextile it's quite simple you just uh, double click on it here and you can see that you have a name over here and your color so that you can identify it in your model and for properties you only need to model the axial stiffness of your geotextile and I've so far clicked isotropic here so this means that it has a uniform axial stiffness you can calculate this axial stiffness by dividing the minimum tensile strength by the elongation at minimum strength. And I'll show you the spec sheet for geotextile here. So this is a geotextile manufactured by 10K. And it's a biaxial woven geotextile. And here we have a PET200S or PET200S. So the minimum tensile strength according to EN ISO 10319 is that this uh, geotextile will have 200 kilonewtons per meter in terms of tensile strength in all directions. And the elongation at minimum strength is 10, 10%. So according to EN ISO 10319, the Axial stiffness would be equal to this value divided by 10%, so you get 2000 here. So that's how I got this 2000 value here. So, one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, I set the material type to elastic here. Well, if you think about it, the geotextile it doesn't really undergo plastic deformation if you look at the setup of the embankment, uh, it's more likely that it'll just be within the elastic range. So now let's look at soil. So um, click on the drop down box. And you can find soil and interfaces here. So for the embankment fill, I have set the material model to more coulomb and drainage type to drain because the soil type is a granular material. And the material model I set it to more coulomb because this is the this is the first soil material model that you should use before you begin using any other material model and it is recommended by Plexus themselves to use the more coulomb uh, material model and I'll explain some of the four common ones that you will see so the linear elastic model is basically based on Hooke's law of isotropic elasticity it only requires your Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. And it's not very useful for modeling soil, so it's only used for modeling concrete walls or intact rock formations in your soil. As mentioned before, the more Coulomb material model is uh, basically recommended for your first time analysis. And it's basically an improvement over the existing linear elastic model and requires only Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio for modeling the elasticity of your soil and it can accept further inputs such as phi your friction angle and uh, c your cohesion value to go and model your soil plasticity and can also model dilatancy if required by having a place to input your psi value and the hardening soil model is the third most common one and it builds upon the existing more cooler model by defining stiffness using three values instead of one. The three values are then used to calculate an average stiffness for your whole soil and the stiffness values that are used are from the triaxial loading stiffness, the triaxial unloading stiffness and the odometer loading stiffness and one thing to note about this model is that the Stiffness is stress dependent, meaning that as the stress increases, the stiffness of your soil will also increase. 
plus the hardening soil name. And last but not least, we have the soft soil model here. It's meant for primary compression of near normally consolidated clay type soils. So it's mainly reserved for soft soils only as indicated by the name. And therefore, it's not as robust as the other models that I mentioned. And for the drainage type, I set it to drain because this is the uh, granular fill for your embankment, so you don't need any undrained analysis here. But I'll explain the different types of undrained analysis here. So on drain A, basically set basically means that your undrained shear strength is modeled using effective strength parameters phi dash and c dash. And basically in this uh, undrained A setting, the development of pore pressure will determine the right effective stress path that leads to failure at a realistic undrained shear strength. And therefore, if your effective stress path is incorrect, you will get an incorrect uh, undrained shear strength. This setting tends to overestimate uh, the undrained shear strength of normally consolidated clays and peat. And another thing to note about this uh, setting is that effective parameters are usually not available from soil investigation reports for uh, undrained soils. And how this undrained A setting works is that Plaxus adds stiffness of, of the water to the stiffness matrix in order to distinguish between effective stresses and pore pressures. So for undrained B, so instead of inputting effective parameters to model your undrained shear strength, you're directly inputting the undrained shear strength into your material model. And direct input of your undrained shear strength means that your phi will be equated to zero and your cohesion will be equal to your undrained shear strength. And another thing to note about this uh, setting is that pore pressures and effective stresses may not be fully correct, but then the resulting undrained shear strength is not affected by uh, incorrect effective stress path. And it's not available for uh, material models such as the soil model here. You can only find undrained A instead of undrained B or C. And for undrained C, basically all parameters are specified as undrained. Stiffness is modeled using undrained Young's modulus and undrained Poisson's ratio. Strength is modeled using undrained shear strength and undrained friction angle. And of course, you have non porous, which is useful for your rocks. So if you're modeling any rocks in your soil, you can click on non porous here. And these are your settings for your uns unsat unsaturated unit weight and saturated unit weight. And you can find these in journal articles or lab reports, or you can even find it yourself if you're doing the lab report. And next for parameters, oh wait, I need to hit cancel first. Uh, yeah, let's open it up. Yeah, that's what happens when you change the soil model. It will affect the values in your parameters here. So. I set my stiffness here to 10,000 kPa here, and you can pause the video to go and see the settings that I've used. So I'll just go through uh, each tab now. So groundwater, I set it to standard, and I use the coarse setting here because we are, we are dealing with a granular material. And Kx and Ky values are based on uh, values taken from the Bentley uh, tutorials, if I'm not wrong, yeah, the, the tutorials from Bentley, they have these KX and KY values, but you can input whatever value you need. Uh, yeah, as long as you have done the tests required. But by default, you can just keep it at these values here if you don't know anything for your KX and KY. For more settings, I didn't really play anything. I didn't really play with anything over here. 
and same for interfaces and initial. So basically for all three models I kept the formal interfaces and initial uh, the same way it is in this uh, uh, in this uh, pop-up right here. So let's click on OK and for the granular soil. Uh, similar undrained, sorry, si similar values for unsaturated and saturated unit weights. Only difference is the stiffness in is increased because I assume that the soil underneath the clay would be heavily compacted over time. And of course, the friction angle is higher here. And everything else is the same as in the embankment fill. And for the soft clay, I've changed it to undrained A because I only got the effective parameters here for the clay. And the unit weights I kept it the same because I could only find this value uh, in the journal article that I referred to. And of course the stiffness of the clay is a lot lower than both embankment fill and granular material. And the friction angle is significantly lower, although the cohesion value is higher which is normal for clay. Ground water is slightly different. I set it to medium fine instead of coarse. And KX and KY values are a lot lower for soft clay as is expected since clays are uh, not very permeable to water. And for the, as said earlier, the thermal and interfaces and initial settings are the same for all three soil models here. So that's the end of the video over here. I've already explained how to model a geotextile and how to model your soil. I hope you enjoyed my Plaxis 2D tutorial series. And if you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more tutorials on engineering videos, do consider subscribing. I'll be making more videos on Revit in the future, probably in June. And I'll probably make some videos on Lumion as well. And as always, I hope you're staying safe and keep learning new things about engineering. And until next time, goodbye.